project, uh, how long it's been in existence. For example, if it's two authors and two authors alone and the code's been in existence for a relatively short time and it's been very well managed, well, they may be able to relicense that code to meet your needs. If it's a large project, of course, with multiple contributors, not well documented, and over multiple years, then it's unlikely you're going to be able to do that. Active management is key, whether it's proprietary software or open source software. You really need to know what you have, where you have it, and how you're using it. And that applies not only initially, but throughout, uh, over time as well. You want to be sure to set up a process. A process by which people uh, identify the open source software that they want to use, that you, if you get some sort of review process, you know how it's going to be used, whether it's going to be modified, whether you're looking at an internal use or a distributed use, and, and then look at the licenses that are involved to make sure that they let you do what you need to do. Compliance is important. Open source software and attribution requirements in particular are something that you want to pay attention to. Um, and, and educate your staff on the requirements of both managing the open source software and the proprietary software and knowing what's being used, where and how, and the importance of it, but also that there may be license terms that need to be complied with and what those terms are. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I think there's two of them. Um, first, what about the public domain licenses? Quite a lot of file standards are implemented as public domain. And the question is uh, how to correctly relicense the public domain code and what about the intellectual property rights that cannot be given away by the author, uh, but which is inconsistent with the statements of the public domain license. Yeah, so I don't actually include public domain on the license spectrum, and that's that's because it, it truly isn't a license so much as a release of um, that individual's rights uh, to the software. And I think there, there's also some some differences from a geographic standpoint in terms of how public domain is treated. So I think you need to look at the individual case when you're dealing with public domain and to truly understand the circumstance. The most conservative approach would be to relicense the code with that author's permission. Um, but, but again, you really do need to look at it in, in the context of where you're using it. Mm -hmm. And my second question is about uh, software patents. Um, how do they fit into the scheme? Who will effectively be specifying for for fees? So, from a patent standpoint, the Eclipse Foundation does not do patent searches. That's something that, um, and a lot of large corporations don't either, and that's for a couple of reasons. In the US system, for example, you have trouble damages in a case where you actually find something, and so the question is if you don't deal with it, you can be exposed to additional liability. Um, again, in the US context, though, this applies to, to other contexts as well. Um, the, pat the, the, the patenting of software patents in particular um, has been questioned widely. Um, concerns raised over whether or not uh, patents are being granted in circumstances where they clearly shouldn't be. So even if you find something, the difficulty of figuring out whether or not it's something to be concerned about uh, is also something that um, is difficult. Uh, so we don't do it. We don't have any plans to do that. Uh, there haven't been, to my knowledge, any cases where it has been raised within the Eclipse ecosystem context. Uh, and, and I think if and when that happens, we'll have to do with that in the was uh, written uh, with the U.S. law uh, in mind. Um, are there any difficulties in inter interpreting the EPL in, in Europe or in Germany in particular? Uh, there haven't been any difficulties identified. But there have been some concerns raised about why, why the New York law was chosen. Uh, and there are some licenses that choose not to put a law at all. Uh, but most people the concern with not putting a law at all is that you don't know how to interpret the license because you need to fix under some jurisdiction to decide how that license is going to be interpreted. Otherwise, the interpretation would be even more widespread than it will be in choosing one single law. 
Um, and so at that time, the New York law was chosen for the Eclipse Public License. There haven't been any concerns raised. There haven't been, to my knowledge, any litigation on the EPL and what it means in certain contexts either. And so, um, you know, the, the, the license itself says that in any jurisdiction, uh, it would be interpreted under the terms of, of New York law. I can tell you that within some jurisdictions, depending on the, the judiciary, you may very well find that they may decide that, that doesn't apply in that context. And that, that unfortunately, is just a, a, a gray area that um, exists today and, and has not yet really been addressed. Any other questions?